it was late September of 1980, and the Phillies found themselves in a heated pennant race. Clinging to a half-game lead, they faced a three-game series against a tough Montreal Expos team. This was a series that could make or break a division championship run. In the first game on September 26th, the score stood tied in the bottom of the ninth when Philly's right fielder, Bake McBride, came to the plate. And here, I'll let Philly's great Harry Callis narrate what happened. Bake McBride stands in. He is singled in three at bats. Here's Palmer's pitch to it. Swing and a long drive. Deep right. It's got a chance. Out of here. Ball game's over. Phillies win two to one. Bake McBride a home run. The Phillies would go on to lose two out of three of that series, wasting an opportunity to put their fiercest competitor for the National League East crown away early. However, McBride's late in heroics ensured that the Phillies kept the race close with about a week to go in the 1980 season. In 1980, Ike McBride was an unsung hero, one of the many pieces that had to fall into place just right to allow the Phillies to finally shake the monkey from their back and seize their first World Series in their 97-year history. Welcome to Philadelphia Baseball History. On this channel, we talk about the history of baseball from the A's to the Phillies to the 19th century. And sometimes we talk about contemporary baseball issues. So if you love baseball and if you love Philadelphia, stick around and subscribe to our channel. How do you show your home team pride? With t-shirts, mugs, tote bags, hats, and so much more. Just go to our merch site, PhiladelphiaBaseballHistory.com. That's PhiladelphiaBaseballHistory.com. The year was 1976, with the United States celebrating its bicentennial. All eyes were on the cradle of liberty, Philadelphia, that year, as the city that hosted the signing of the Declaration of Independence also hosted the Major League Baseball All-Star Game that year. Indeed, at that game, all eyes were on the five Phillies who made the squad. But the Phillies had their eyes on someone else. A 27-year-old outfielder who played for St. Louis, who made the team as a reserve. He was the Cardinals' lone representative that year, and by mid-June 1977, he found himself as the Phillies' starting right fielder. Hailing from Fulton, Missouri, Arnold Ray McBride attended Westminster College before making his 1973 debut for the St. Louis Cardinals. In his first full season of 1974, McBride put up impressive numbers, so much so that he was declared the National League Rookie of the Year. His father, also named Arnold, had been a pitcher for the Kansas City Monarchs, and for some reason, the younger McBride had no idea why, while his father was in the Negro Leagues, he had earned the nickname Bake. And so the younger McBride was often called Little Bake. Bake McBride came to Philadelphia in a trade in 1977. Upon coming to the city of brotherly love, McBride became a fan favorite. His 338 batting average for the Phillies in the rest of that 1977 season certainly could explain why. Phillies fans, noting his nickname Bake McBride, started calling him Shake and Bake, a nickname derived from a popular product for the preparation of chicken that was widely advertised on television. 
Although Shake and Bake's performance dipped in 1977, in 1979, McBride was one of a few reasons to be happy about the Phillies' performance that year. But in 1980, at age 31, Bake McBride had a career year when the Phillies were looking for contributions from all sources to compete in a close National League East race. Batting 309 on the season, McBride knocked in a career high of 87 runs. McBride's performance had been consistent all season, but he really dialed up the power in the late months, scoring 40 of his 67 runs from July onward. In the postseason of 1980, Ake McBride set the stage in the third inning of Game 1 of the World Series, hitting a three-run home run, which put the Phillies in the lead in a game that they would eventually win. In the eighth inning of Game 2, McBride's single off Dan Quisenberry tied the score in a close game that the Phillies needed to win in order to have the advantage going into Kansas City. In Game 5 of the series, Big McBride was dogged by a controversy of whether he indeed caught a foul ball hit by Hal McRae that ended the fifth inning. This is how McBride responded to being questioned by Brian Gumbel when he reached Philadelphia. Royals had themselves a 3-2 lead. There were two out runners on first and third when Hal McRae hit a ball to the corner and right. Big McBride went to the corner and came away with a baseball in his glove, but there still seems to be some debate on whether the ball was caught or whether it was trapped. It was ruled a catch, end of inning, end of Royals rally. Big McBride, let me ask you, and look me in the eye, don't look away. Did you catch the baseball? I can't really tell you. You know, uh, when I went to the wall, I closed my eyes and, uh, you know, the ball was in my gloves. So. Hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it, hold it. You closed your eyes? I, cl I closed my eyes because I saw the wall and, uh, you know, I didn't want nothing to happen to my face. So, you know, I can't really say if I caught the ball or not. I don't know if it hit off the wall or if it hit in my glove first. Did it feel like it hit in the webbing of the glove or it off hit. the thumb part like it would if it was trapped? It hit off the thumb part and went into the webbing. And, uh, you know, I can't say if it hit the wall first or not. Will that answer change after the series? No, I'm going to still have the same answer. I, I can't tell you if I caught the ball or not. Having seen it on the replay, what do you think? I think I caught it. I do. Big Big Bride would get his fifth RBI of the World Series in the deciding game six, ending the World Series with a 304 batting average. Bad knees, however, plagued Big McBride's tenure as a Philly. After missing most of May of 1981 with knee problems, the Phillies traded McBride to Cleveland at the end of the season for reliever Sid Manji. Two seasons later, in 1983, Big McBride retired from baseball. After five years with the Philadelphia Phillies, Big McBride had an impressive set of statistics. Manager Dallas Green called him the most consistent hitter for the Phillies in 1980 and a clutch performer. His performance down the stretch in 1980 and in the World Series contributed to a Phillies historic season. Shake and Bake McBride was clearly one of the best right fielders in Phillies history. Special thanks to our patrons, Ray Easterday, Mitchell Valentino, and Brett Krasnoff. You too can support this channel by going over to Patreon.com. Also check out our merch store at PhiladelphiaBaseballHistory.com. We'll have all relevant links in the description box below. Thank you so much for watching.